Preceding the Battle of Chancellorsville, General Ambrose E. Burnside lost miserably to General Robert E. Lee at the Battle of Fredericksburg, lasting a single campaign at the head of the Army of Potomac. The Union loss convinced President Lincoln to make a change, and Burnside was replaced by General Joseph Hooker. Hooker was not an easy choice for Lincoln. Nevertheless, Hooker polished the army in fine condition with more power and strength than ever. What Hooker was able to do with the gloomy and dispirited forests was magical. General Couch. He was extremely confident with his army, and he boasted, My plans are perfect, and when I start to carry them out, may God have mercy on General Lee, for I will have none. On April 30th, 1863, the war began. Hooker closed on the Chancellorville intersection far behind Lee's left. The next day, May 1st, Lee collected his army from its widespread camps across the Old Dominion. Lee used his regiments to surround Hooker in the wilderness, a forest with tangled thickets that made up about 70 square miles around Chancellorville. On the night of May 1st, Lee and his lieutenant Stonewall Jackson formed their last and most strategic plan. In the morning of May 2nd, Jackson took approximately 30,000 men and planned to cross the front of Hooker's army and swing behind it. Lee, with only about 15,000 men to hold Hooker's army, achieved the job of pretending to be affected by the attacks with an insufficient line of skirmishers. That evening, Jackson finished his circuit around the enemy and released his men in an attack on Hooker's right flank and rear. They destroyed the Federal 11th Corps and drove the Union Army back about two miles. But in the confusion and darkness of the fighting, some of Jackson's own men shot him in the arm and he died a week later of pneumonia. Losing Jackson was a severe loss to the Confederate Army. It would be a senseless waste of words to attempt a eulogy upon this great among the greatest of sons who have immortalized Virginia. To the Corps of Cadets of the Virginia Military Institute, what a legacy he has left you. What an example of all that is good and great and true in the character of a Christian soldier. General F.H. Smith. The secretive planning and scheming of May 1st and 2nd paid off on the 3rd to a match in the woods on the three edges of the Chancellorville intersection. To further show a lack of courage, Hooker abandoned key ground, Confederate artillery fired, and Southern soldiers propelled ahead. At last, Southern infantry destroyed their final resistance. They joined once again in the Chancellorville clearing. However, rumors came from what seemed to be Fredericksburg that a Northern rear guard had broken and threatened the rear. The Battle of Salem Church on May 3rd stopped the threat from the east. Lee went to the area to confirm success on the 4th. He returned to Chancellorville to witness and supervise the collecting of Hooker's defeated army. Hooker crossed the Rappahannock River once again, and it was now early on May 6th. In the end, more than 17,000 men were killed, wounded, or missing in the Union Army, and more than 13,000 were killed, wounded, or missing in the Confederate Army. Lee's victory is considered to be one of the greatest in the entire war. Historian Matthew Gallman makes a good point. Were it not for the boldness of Stonewall Jackson, who executed one of the classic maneuvers in military history, Hooker's plan might have worked, though many believe that Hooker simply lost his confidence. The South benefited from their great leaders, two examples being Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee, as proven by their victory in the Battle of Chancellorsville. These men, and many others, were very strategic in their plans and moves. Additionally, the majority of the military colleges in the country were in the South. Not only did the South benefit from their leaders, but at the time, the South was hugely agricultural and supplied most of the United States' crops, including cotton and food. The South also was home to more than 3 million slaves. While slavery was one of the causes of the Civil War, the Southern agricultural industry was dependent on slaves. The greatest strength of the South, though, was the fact that a huge part of the fighting was held on their own land. Despite all of these factors, the South fell behind in their industrial and technological industry. The North manufactured more than 90% of the country's firearms, locomotives, and boots and shoes. The North also had about twice the density of railroads per square mile. With this being said, they lacked in many aspects. One is that they were fighting on southern territory, and weren't familiar with it. 
Another is that their generals were not nearly as skilled as those in the South. In fact, most of the Union losses can be traced down to the generals' reluctance to make risks necessary to win. Both the North and the South had many strengths and weaknesses, and ultimately they determined the winning side in each battle.